Japan is an awesome travel destination and I want to convince you why you should visit in the next 13 reasons. Japan has so much to offer for tourists. They have beautiful mountains, oceans, stunning scenery, historical culture that is so rich and deep, as well as amazing food. And I've been living here for five years and I'm not tired of it yet. But my friends and family have yet to visit, so I want to convince them along with you as to why you should come. You might be thinking, why should I visit right now? Well, that's a good question, because it's super, super cheap right now. The yen is some of the cheapest it's been in years, so rather than wait and risk it, I recommend coming now, because that means you can travel more, eat more, stay at more fancy places, and shop more. Japan is one of the safest destinations in the entire world, especially for female travelers like myself. I can walk around at night and not have to worry. I can also just hop on a train and travel across the country and not have to worry. I can go out and eat by myself. I feel so comfortable and a lot of people come to Japan and realize it's such a great place to visit as a solo traveler. Japan has an extremely low crime rate where people in restaurants will leave their MacBooks and iPhones to mine their seat while they go and order their Starbucks. I still can't do it, but people around me are always leaving their phones and wallets on the table. There's children riding the train at even five years old to school. So it's incredibly safe for travelers. Another great reason is the traditional culture and historical culture they have, but also the modern side of things. A great example is to compare Tokyo, which is this modern but metropolis of so many things going on. You've got Shibuya Crossing, you have Shinjuku with all the, the neon lights. But then if you hop on a train and go just a few hundred kilometers, you can find Kyoto, which is a city steeped in so much history, thousands and thousands of years, where you'll find temples and shrines, which are over a thousand years old. There's still some sides of the culture that are practiced today, such as the Maiko-san, the geisha culture, which you can experience in Kyoto. Of course, there's tea ceremony, and then there's other cultural things like onsen. The only way to really experience Japanese culture is by visiting the country itself. Japanese cuisine is a huge draw for foreign tourists visiting every single year. Thousands, if not millions of people are coming here to eat their way through this country. And I don't blame them. Japanese food is some of the best I've ever had. From yakitori, to ramen, to the sake, to the fruit, to every single part of it. It is amazing. And no matter where you go, it is always high quality. It's fresh produce. And most of the time you're going to be able to get a really good affordable dinner and I'm talking about under $10 for a full meal for dinner. That's insane. There are so many restaurants, I can't even imagine how many Tokyo has. Every corner there's a little izakaya with bustling salarymen eating their late night dinner. Or if you go around the corner there's like a kisaten with a quiet atmosphere. You can drink your coffee even at midnight, some of them are open 24 hours. One of my favorite things is the local specialties found throughout the entire country. If you go to Hokkaido, they're famous for their dairy products or seafood. But if you go to Kyoto, they're known for their matcha and their desserts and everything. Another great thing is street food. You can go to Asakusa where you can eat lots of street food. Or Osaka where they have, you know, takoyaki and okonomiyaki and all those delicious things. It's a heaven on earth for food lovers. Not only is it affordable, but you don't have to tip here, which saves you a lot of money, especially if you're used to the tipping culture in the US. You just pay for your meal. It's usually including tax. So that's the price you'll pay. And if you like fine dining, but don't have a lot of money, don't worry, because there's a lot of budget Michelin style options in Tokyo where you can eat ramen for like $10. I haven't been yet, but that is on my bucket list for Japan. There's also a wide variety of different dining styles. You could go to an izakaya or you could go to a sushi train. You can of course go to the convenience store and just get some takeaway 7-Eleven food, which is surprisingly good. Don't compare it to 7-Eleven in your home country because it's way better. <laughs> Something that hypes up even the locals here are the amazing festivals they have throughout the entire year. You have the Natsumatsuri, the summer festivals with all the floats and the mikoshi and everyone's, you know, dancing. Or you have the snow festival in Sapporo, which draws thousands of people every single year to see the ice sculptures. A lesser known one is the summer music festivals like Fuji Rock in Niigata, which I am dying to go to. Another favorite is a cherry blossom festival. I went to one this year in Kawazu and it was a great experience seeing the cherry blossoms. I was like, I'm still want, I still want to relive that moment forever. <laughs> A big one is pop culture. If you're an anime lover, a manga lover, or a video game lover, this is heaven on earth for you. 
please come ASAP. I'm sure you already want to come. You can buy all the goods you've ever wanted. Theme cafes, Universal Studios Japan, and go to Nintendo World. There's the Pokemon Center, the Ghibli Museum. There's even a manga museum in Kyoto. There's also a lot of limited edition merch that you can only get here, so it's perfect for all you pop culture lovers. One thing I've really come to appreciate after living here is the nature Japan has. It's so vast, you have mountains, because most of the country is actually made of mountains. Like Mount Fuji, but then you also go inland to places like Kochi and Shikoku Island and you have beautiful crystal blue rivers. Then you also have bamboo forests like the one in Arashiyama in Kyoto. Every season there's a new place to discover, of course there's sakura season, but then you have autumn leaves. Ajisai, which are the hydrangea flowers in the rainy season. Of course not to mention snow season, where if you go up north there's some beautiful scenery. Seeing shrines and like tori gates in snow is one of my favorite things. Even if you've been to Japan, you can come back again and experience it in a whole new way because each season, the nature is completely different. Also, a little bit related to food, but the food changes every season too. It's so great. So you get new food experiences each time you come too. If you're a fan of tech, then Japan is the place for you. There's some of the most futuristic things I've ever seen in my life here. Of course, the famous washlet toilet, which saves me and my butt every single day. Or you have robots who serve you. Even in like cheap restaurants, they'll come out and serve your food. Or even like robots serving you at check-in at hotels, like the dinosaur hotel. Or you can even just buy some nice technology to bring home, like this camera I'm filming on, the Sony camera. The architecture is one of the most exciting things to see when coming to Japan because it can vary so much. Of course you have the tiny tiny buildings that you come across that are this thin and people are living in there. But you can also find like beautiful historical buildings like Machia, the wooden townhouses in Kyoto. Or you have the modern buildings like the ones in Tokyo, the beautiful tower in Shinjuku, or you have Miyashita Park in Shibuya with a garden or like a lawn on the top where you can just lie down and gaze out. One of my favorite things is just walking down the street and admiring the cityscape and the kind of buildings they have here. Being someone who grew up watching anime, I kind of romanticized the electricity wires. Even though overseas that would be considered ugly, it just brings this beautiful aesthetic to Japan. One of the most unique experiences you can have is staying at a ryokan, a traditional Japanese inn. And this is one of my favorite things to do when I travel here because you get to sleep on the floor. I know that sounds weird, but they have tatami, got on a futon, and it's actually one of the best ways to sleep. If you're lucky, you'll get to have an onsen in the room. And you might have dinner and breakfast and this whole beautiful stay organized if you find a fancy place. So that's something to add to your itineraries if you do come. And you get to wear the yukata after you get out of the bath. Man, I just want to go to a ryokan. But otherwise, if you don't have a lot of money, you can go on the budget side of things and stay at a capsule hotel. These tiny little box type rooms, you can have a unique experience where you might sleep in a bookshelf. Do keep in mind they're very popular these days and a lot of tourists want to book them out. So I don't know if they're as cheap as they used to be. I think everyone should hop on the Shinkansen at least once in their lifetime, which is a good reason to come to Japan, just to ride all the trains. I was not the biggest train person, but after moving here, I really like them. It's like all the jingles and the sounds and just see the city going by. Not to mention there are so many beautiful local trains which are very scenic and they might go through cherry blossoms or go through autumn leaves. Japan is so big on trains that there's even a term that's called densha otaku and this basically means train nerds. <laughs> so they will go to stations or trains and have their big DSLR cameras and take lots of photos and have blogs and videos about them. So the culture here about trains is so big and I am low key, I'm all for that. <laughs> One thing that's worth experiencing is just how clean everything is. There is no rubbish and it's also highly, highly efficient. Going home, it's just like, ah, train, it's late, 20 minutes. Especially in Sydney where trains are not reliable. <laughs> Japan is a shopper's paradise on earth and I'm not exaggerating this at all because I've seen some of the biggest shopping centers in my life here. And then you also have the traditional streets which are my favorite where you can find little shops that sell kind of artisanal things. You can buy pottery, you can buy little knickknacks. If you go to Harajuku or Shibuya, that's the fashion makeup place. Or you can go to Akihabara, Nakano to get gadgets and like secondhand anime goods and rare items. Or you can just go to the drugstore or the supermarket and pick up your favorite Kit Kats and snacks, which is what I do for friends a lot of the time. Bring a lot of suitcases to at least put in some of your stuff because you will buy a lot. I don't know anyone who's left without buying a lot. 
Japanese people are known to be some of the most polite and friendly people on the planet, and I can attest to that. I have seen and experienced Japanese people running out of the shop because I forgot one yen, or I was lost and asked for directions and just expected a go left at the next corner, but they walked with me halfway across the station to find my destination and make sure I got there. So this is something that a lot of my um, friends who have visited told me that they were just so moved by because the Japanese people went above and beyond to help them. There's of course a language barrier, but I wouldn't worry too much because the majority of Japanese people are so happy to try and use their English or an app to try and communicate with you and do their best to just make sure you're having a good time and enjoy your Japan trip. My advice is before visiting, try and brush up at least a little bit on Japanese etiquette, just the basics so you don't come here not knowing anything. I could still go on and on. I love Japan so much and it's an awesome travel destination, but let's leave it at that today and I'll see you here because I know you're already booking a flight right now. Yeah. <laughs> see you in Japan. Bye.